You ready? Here we go. I almost forgot what it had to say. I choose to look upward. I choose to look upward. Not outward. Not outward. To do what? To solve my problem. Yeah, that really excited me. I can't hardly stand it. I gotta wait. I gotta let my heart calm down. Uh, let, let's let's do that as if we haven't seen sports in about six months. Okay. And we're at our first sporting event. And we're cheering for the home team. Ready? I choose to look upward. I choose to look upward. Not outward. Not outward. To solve my problems. To solve my problems. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. So with staying with the theme of, of sports, let's talk about tonight in part how to be a winner. Because I think so many of us have learned from our old lifestyle and stuff and, and just the, some things that have been that have happened to us. We've learned how to be losers. I think sometimes we forget what it's like to be a winner or how to be a winner. So I just kind of want to go over some of that stuff. The first thing we have to understand, or, or I hope we would understand, is, is that being a winner has some identifiable qualities. And, and, and really what I'm getting at is, is to be a winner is, is all about an overall attitude. Okay. And those attitudes, if you notice winners, guys that have, are winners, that they have two specific attitudes going on. The first one is optimism, and the second one is enthusiasm. So right off the bat, you may be telling yourselves, well, why are you teaching about this? That in itself should tell you why I'm teaching this, because you even asked that, you asked yourself that question. Because obviously you're not very enthusiastic and you're not very optimistic. So we have to learn sometimes or, or, or relearn how to do these things. Because the bottom line is most of us in drug addiction and alcoholism and, and whatever life, other life controlling problems we've been addicted to or have had, had in our past have brought us to a point of not having optimism and certainly there's not been any enthusiasm. And we have gotten ourselves into a habit of being negative. And a lot of times what happens is, is we have to relearn how to be positive again. We have to relearn the, the thought processes, processes that we have had in the past as children. Because children, for the most part, are very optimistic and they're very enthusiastic about everything they do. I mean, I'll be honest with you. You ask my, my, my two grandsons, they, they, my two grandsons love puzzles. Well, one loves Legos. The kid can build anything. As a matter of fact, the next building, I'm going to let him engineer it and it's going to be totally out of Legos. <laughs> That's how good this kid is. But he loves Legos and he loves doing stuff. But anytime I, and the other one likes puzzles. And so anytime, so one's six and one's three. Anytime I go over there and I say, you know, like, like Anders, what have you been doing? Or, or Jensen, what have you been doing? They get so excited and say, Pops, Pops, you know, one's pulling me one way, one's pulling me the other way. They both want me to see what they were doing. And they get so excited that they can accomplish these things in their young little lives. See, kids grow up with enthusiasm. Kids grow up for the most part. Kids grow up being optimistic. We have lost that, many of us, along the way. We've lost it because of our own mistakes. We've lost it because of our lifestyles, our past lifestyles. We've lost it for all kinds of reasons. But the bottom line is, we've gotten beat down by the world. And sometimes, many times, and I'll be honest with you, with many of you, you've been beat down so much, you don't even know how to get enthusiastic about anything. Amen. You know? For instance, we all have to wear these goofy masks. I got it. But we can get enthusiastic about it. See, I get enthusiastic about it because I don't have to look at your ugly mugs for 
because the mass excited. See, that's a, I get enthusiastic about. On the other hand, you should be getting enthusiastic because you can't tell if I'm ticked off at you or smiling at you. That could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing, but it could be a good thing. But seriously, you see what I'm saying? So, so we have to understand what this relationship is. It's, it's a psychosomatic relationship. How's that for a big word? Spend it out, right? I, I'm not, I know you don't know what it means, so I got, I got it right here, I got it. So, winners have a, a working knowledge of the psyche. Okay? Some of you don't know what psyche means. Psyche simply means the science of the mind. They understand, their, they understand the mind. They understand, and I'm not saying you're, you, be, you, you, know, you become necessarily uh, uh, PhDs in, 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 or you're going to operate on somebody's brain or something like that, but you have an idea of how your brain works. And that's what winners have. They have an idea of how their, their mind works. The other, the other part of that, soma, means body. So what I'm getting at here is that winners have this working knowledge of how their mind and their body work together. Okay? Because what we have to what we need to understand is, is that the body expresses the concerns of the mind. So in other words, if you're negative all the time, then your body, your body language is going to show that negativity. If you're positive and you're trying to tell yourself, give yourself some positive input, then there's a real good chance that your body language is going to be more positive. So how does that equate to life? And it's really pretty simple because life in itself, as I see it anyway, is somewhat of a, of a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, you've heard the saying, you make out of life whatever you put into it, and whatever, or however that saying goes. I think I just made up a saying, but whatever that saying is about life, you know, what you put into it, you get out of it, that's the way it goes, I think. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? And, 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 and as I've said and told you in the past, you know, to, to make it even simpler, what's down in the well comes up in the bucket. So if you're, if you're putting in negativity, then your life in general is going to be negative. Now, now please understand what, what, what I'm getting at. For instance, many of you came home tonight. It's been hot out. Of course, today wasn't as hot as it has been, but it was hot out. It rained. Maybe you got rained on a little bit. Who knows what? But the bottom line is, especially when I sit out there and I'm watching you guys coming home, and I, you know, and how did, how did, how's your day? How did you, you know, oh, it was all right, you know. See, that tells me everything. And I, and I understand to a point that, yes, you're working in, in hot weather, you're sweating, you're tired, you're all kinds of things going on, you just walked in the door, and, you know, some, some nitwit asking you how your day's going, you know. And you have to answer them because this, the nitwit that's asking you is running the place. So you kind of feel obligated to answer that question and not just ignore me. And I, I understand that. But to, but to a point, if we're always talking about how bad the day was, then, then doesn't it make sense that as you started the day, instead of starting the day optimistic and full of enthusiasm, you started negatively and pessimistically, <laughs> Then, then have you noticed that if you start the day that way, that most of the day continues to get just worse and worse and worse and worse? Every day. All the time. So if we would start our day, for instance, because of my age and some, some of the health problems I have, every day I'm above ground <coughs> and I can open up my eyes and see is a great day for me, which usually starts right in the beginning of the, of the, of the day when my alarm goes off. If I, can, if I can hear my alarm and I can open up my eyes and I can get up out of bed and I'm breathing, I'm doing fabulous. You see what I'm saying? You say, well, that's crazy, Pastor Joe. Is it really? Because honestly, even, even at, at a much younger age, at half my age, I've had the same optimistic outlook on life. 
Because I remember times in my own life when, when I've come close to, to death or, or killing myself, not like suicide, but I've done things that, that you know, you shouldn't put your, a, normal, a normal body through. And I've been fortunate to live as long as I've lived. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not ready to go check out anytime soon. I'd like to live for another 20 or 30 years. But the bottom line is, is as young as you are, if you start now retraining the way you think and the way you talk and the way, then, then you're going you're gonna to feel differently. Say, well, that sounds like some of that positive, you know, possess it, uh, confess it, possess it stuff and things like that, some new age stuff. Not really, because I'm going to get into that and I'm going to show you what the difference is. I'm not just saying that if you make believe you're a giraffe, you're going to become a giraffe. That's ridiculous. Why? You know. Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Or you know, as I tell my wife, you know, you can't just you can't just wish yourself to be five foot seven. You know, she's like five two on a good day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't work that way. I remember when being overweight, there were days when I would just continue to tell myself, you're not going to overeat, you're not going to overeat, you're not going to overeat. Yeah, that doesn't work out real well because you usually overeat. Okay? So it takes more than just telling yourself stuff and it's going to happen because if that were true, then you could basically wish for anything, like kind of like a 3D printer, you know, from what I understand about 3D printers. If you, if you have the idea from which, by the way, and I probably shouldn't go to it because I'm on camera, but just for, do you know that, I forget who's doing it, one of the chicken places is, is, is experimenting with making uh, three uh, chicken uh, nuggets from a 3D printer. No, it's not McDonald's. It's certainly not McDonald's. It's one of the basic chicken. It's either like a Popeye's or chicken. Chick-fil-A, one of them, I, I can't remember which one. But it was funny because one of the, <laughs> one of the, the journalists, it was a panel of journalists talking about stuff, and this came up, and one of the journalists asked another journalist, well, what do you think about that? <laughs> so they got the camera on this journalist, and, and she's basically just sitting there like looking bewildered, and finally answers and says, I'm not sure because I'm trying to figure out how they get the chicken into the 3D printer <clears throat> to make the chicken. I mean, how do you make chicken out of out of a out of? I don't get it. I'm I'm the same you know, I mean, how does that happen? But they're saying they're doing it, but who knows? All I'm getting at is is that that's not what I'm talking about tonight. I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I'm not talking about if I wish it and wish it hard enough and well enough and 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 strong enough and and loud enough or whatever, then it's going to happen. No, that's, that's, see, that's, that's not, that's ridiculous. I don't even know, that's just, that's just, that's like card carrying movie tunes right there. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about stuff that works. So, if, 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 if life is, 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 is a self-fulfilling prophecy, then every morning you get up, you are beginning to prophesy in however you, you react to getting up and having to get up to go to work or whatever it is you're doing, you're prophesying what the rest of your day is going to be like. Does that make sense? Okay? So again, as you're telling yourself, oh, it's a crummy day, oh, it's raining, oh, it's this, oh, it's that, you know, what you're putting in is going to basically come up in the well sooner or later. Okay? And we already know that the more negative talk or self-talk you do or hang around negative talk, that that begets or that gives way to negativity. Now, on the other hand, the good news is, is that the more positive you are, because if what I just said is true, then the more positive you talk and you think, then the more positive you're going to feel about the day in yourself. Okay? <clears throat> and we have to be careful because we don't, we don't, we don't really 
look at the science. We don't think things through. And I'm not, again, making believe I'm a scientist. Most of you know I'm certainly not, I'm far from being a scientist. But the simple fact is, when we're talking about fears and worries, that, that those fears and worries produce anxiety. And in and of itself, anxiety is just a warning sign. But what happens is, if you have an overabundance of anxiety over and over and over again, just like anything else that we do, that anxiety then produces certain types of antibodies and certain type of hormones that can affect your physical being. I'm not even talking about your mind, just your physical being. It basically, you can talk yourself sick. <clears throat> now, you know, we're, we're doing this whole thing, and, and we've seen this in the world. We've seen it here at Fresh Start because of this, this COVID-19 thing going on where, where we have seen ourselves basically talk ourselves into such fear that some of us have left over that fear. Some of us, some of us just can't handle it. Okay? And yet, as we know, nobody here has had, had, had any, any symptoms or been sick that I know of anyway in the, in the last six months or however long it's been. It feels like an eternity. But the last six months, I guess it is, five, six months, nobody here has, has, has had any, any real uh, symptoms as the CDC says, the symptom of, of COVID. Uh, I think we've had allergies, and we've worked our way into thinking you got COVID. Some guys have thought they had talked themselves into thinking they have COVID or tried to talk themselves into thinking they have COVID. But, but you know, really, if, when, we look at, when we look at, even in, in, in general as a whole in the world, think about it. We, I don't want to get off on it. On the media only tells us how many more people have tested positive for COVID. I got it. The media will only tell you how crowded our, 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 our uh, hospitals are getting. I got it. What the media really doesn't tell you, and think about this, is they don't tell you how many of those people tested don't have any symptoms. Or how many of those people that ended up in a hospital have not died? Now I understand it, please don't get me wrong. I understand there's a lot, there's been a lot of deaths because of this thing. But the bottom line is, if we just listen to stuff either totally positive or totally negative, then we're not going to really have the whole story. Yeah, exactly. No balance. Thank you. So we need, and as you know, the word around here is balance. We need to have a balance, and we need to, and we need to have a balance. Again, I'm not telling you, you know, the whole name it and claim it thing back in the '70s in Christianity was was basically if you don't speak it, any negativity, no negativity will ever come. Well, I can honestly tell you, Kelly and I almost got divorced over me not speaking stuff. And I don't want to get into that whole thing, but but it was it was I mean seriously, we almost got the book because the woman thought I was cheating on her. Well, you know, yes and no, but we won't go into that, but but you see what I'm saying? Because I'm not speaking anything of it, because I'm in fear of speaking about it, because if I speak it, oh my god, bad things will happen. She's not speaking about her fears because, oh my God, if I speak about it, it's really going to come true. And this is kind of what some teachers were teaching you back then. And so neither one of us was speaking about the very fears we had. And all they did was fester more and more and more and more to one day they came to a head. And we seriously almost got divorced over it. It's only by the grace of God we had enough sense to run to a... To, it was a Sunday, I'll never forget it, and we ran to church even though we didn't want to, because we just had this major argument, but we ran to church, found the counselor, a pastor, and, and he began to tell us what, 
was really going on. And then we began to lear learn the word balance, and so we understood that you can't just, you know, talk positively all the time. That's, that's not even human. It's not reality. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what I mean. That's, there's no way you can be positive 24-7, 365 days a year. It's an impossibility. And, the, and if you meet somebody that, and, and they're doing it constantly, I'm not going to call anybody a liar, but you might want to really just kind of look at the whole thing. On the other hand, but yet how many of us have talked negatively 24-7, 365, and the very things we've talked about or worried about or feared about became our life. You see what I'm saying? All I'm getting at is, is that either you're going to look at a glass that it's either going to be half full or half empty. It's, 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 not, it's not both. Okay? And it's up to us to decide how we're going to view that glass. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm talking to you from experience. Because I used to be that totally negative person all the time. And it didn't do me or even anybody in the program any good. Because I never looked at the, at the, at the accomplishments men in the program were making or the strides they were making to, to better their lives. I always picked out the negative. Oh, Brother George, just got a job. Great, how much you making? $10 an hour. Oh, that's, I'm sorry to hear that. You know what I'm saying? I wish you could have made 12 or 15. What is that going to tell the man that's, that's, you know, yeah, let's get behind Pastor Joe and follow him. You know, you know kind of like the Pied Piper right off the cliff. You know. But you see what I'm saying? And if, at some point in time I realized I was doing that, I was always looking at the glass half empty instead of half full. And I decided myself that this can't keep going on, you know, because now I'm just not affecting myself or my immediate family. I'm affecting total strangers that are looking to me to grab onto something so they can change their lives around. And every time they grabbed on to something, I just, I had this big saw, and I just whacked, whacked the limb off. Yeah, no, no, I'm holding on, I'm just barely holding on. Yeah, no problem, hold on a minute. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Sorry you're not making 12 an hour, man. <laughs> yeah, type of thing. Yeah. Oh, I got a job, I'm working 35 hours a week. Oh, man, that's too bad. Too bad you couldn't get overtime. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, anybody would want to just quit when the the leader is telling you, "Oh my God, what a disaster!" <laughs> what the heck? You know? So I feel, I realized I had to change that around, and I began to take steps to change that around, and I did it. And I'm going to tell you how I did it. Basically, by understanding. That, that what's down in the well comes up in the bucket. And even though I was taking in the word and reading the word all the time, I was also taking in a lot, of, a lot more negativity than the positive, positive stuff. So what came out was negativity. So I had to change the way I looked at the glass. And at some point, and, it, and I'm going to tell you, it takes work. But at some point, I, I finally got myself to realize I'm not going to look at the glass half empty. I'm going to look at it half full. Because the bottom line is, if you were out in the desert and you were, you were dying, and somebody offered you this much water, I mean, what are you going to say? Oh, geez, man, that's all you can do. That's it? Two swallows of water? What are you kidding? No, you're going to take the two swallows of water and thank God for it. Hopefully you can go on another day and figure out how to get out of the desert. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you say, well, that sounds so simple. And to some of you it is simple, but to most of us, that's the hardest thing we, 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 we can do, God, is to I learn how to do that. Huh? Thank God I got a job. Yeah, man. You know, yeah. $10 an hour, 35 hours a week. Just... Hey, you know, hey, what, whatever, man. <laughs> you know, what I'm getting at is, is, yes, you're right. Yeah, you can, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't try to strive to better yourself. 
but to be thankful for the yeah. things you need to be thankful for. You, know? you opened up your eyes this morning. Most of you got them open up tonight. <laughs> Those of you that don't, I'm pretty sure I can see your, your chest. He, so, you, so you're not dead. I know you're just sleeping. <laughs> you know, so you're still alive. You know? I mean, if we really wanted to get into it, how many of us that should be in jail aren't in jail? How many of those of us that, that have had near-death experiences are not dead? I got news for you. Those are things to be thankful for. Yeah, those are the blessings. Those are the things to be thankful for. So, so to just kind of go over this one more, one, one more instance. So, the, so, so what's really happening is, is that your mind and your body are trying to stay balanced. But the only way your mind and your body are going to be able to stay balanced is by putting in or, or achieving some healthy, creative thoughts instead of the poor little old me's all the time. And let's get real. Those of us that have been in addiction, we got that, those, I call them the plums, poor little old me. We got down, that down to a science. You've seen it. Oh, poor little old me. Nobody cares. I'm just going to go out to the garden and eat worms. <laughs> you know. Nobody gives a darn about me. Yeah, you know. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> Shucks. And remember that the body always does what the mind tells it to. The body, your body, seeks to display health and well-being. But if your mind is continually telling it it's sick or it's broken down or whatever, then it's never going to achieve the health and well-being that I'm talking about. You know, it's kind of like when you, and I, I can only speak for myself, but, but you know, obviously at, at my age now, I'm not in the gym, I'm not lifting as much weight as I could when I was a young man, like some of you guys. But the bottom line is, every time I go to the gym, I try to do a little better, either more sets, more reps, or a little bit heavier weight. Not because I'm prideful, but because I know the more I push myself and the more I tell myself I can do it and I achieve it, the healthier I'm going to feel. And I'll be honest with you, I feel pretty healthy for somebody my age. I really do. So, like I said, some of you may be thinking, and I don't know if you're familiar with the term, it's not very big right now, it was a few years, maybe 10 years ago, it's called New Age Thinking, where basically uh, New Age Thinking was theoretically saying you can, you're, you're, your own, you're your own little god and you can will yourself to do anything you want. Okay? And that's not exactly what I'm talking about, is, is what I'm trying to get across to you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where's Jesus Christ in all of this. I'm talking about using positive affirmations right out of the Word of God. And I'm, I, I'm not going to read them because, and I only wrote down five of them, but they're too long. But for, for example, if you really want to get a start, Matthew 15, 19 and 20. Positive affirmation. 1 Timothy 4.12. Positive affirmation. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 15. Positive affirmation. James 1.2. Positive affirmation. And then something I stole from a very dear friend of mine a saying, I am a unique, unrepeatable miracle of God. 
which is basically what the whole Word of God is saying. You read the Bible, you read the New Testament, and that's exactly what the whole New Testament is saying, that we are a unique, unrepeatable miracle of God. You want to start your day off right? When you look in the mirror, you're brushing your teeth or whatever, and that ghastly thing is looking back at you in that mirror, tell that thing, you know what? Hey, you, I'm a unique, unrepeatable miracle of God. Tell yourself that through the day. And I will guarantee you, your day is going to be a lot better. Now, if it was that simple, I'd say good night and we'd go home. But it's not that simple because there are other applications, action things that we have to do. For instance, having a positive attitude is a learned behavior. So you're going to have to practice at this. You're going to have to not only practice at how not to be negative, but then practice on how to be positive more than you're negative. It's going to take some work. You're going to have to learn how to have positive self-talk. You say, well, that sounds crazy. Don't tell me it's crazy. You all talk to yourselves all the time. <laughs> Whether your lips are really moving or not, you're talking in your mind. You talk to yourself. You talk to yourself all the time. Well, I don't know why I just I just called my girlfriend. I don't know why. You know, you're working, but I don't know why she didn't call back. What the heck's going on? That's that's self talk. Well, if you can do that in a negative aspect, you can do that in a positive aspect. I just called her. And she didn't answer. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Not exactly that way. So so how do we do positive self talk? It's something we've been talking about all summer. You're going to have to learn the scriptures. You've got to know the word and memorize some of the word in order to speak the word, which is positive. So if it were me, and it was me, what I did was I began to write down on index cards positive scriptures. Just one per index card. And then I put all these index cards everywhere. I put them on the mirror when I, when I, that I looked in to shave and brush my teeth. And I would have that up there. And I would say, I would, I would read it, say it. You know, a little difficult when you brush your teeth, but you know, you see what I'm saying? And I would self, I would say, I had them on my, on my, on my sun visor in my car. And I, I pull the sun visor down, and boom, there was a scripture. I had them in my top pocket. I'd take them out and I'd flip through them all the time throughout the day, re, re, reiterating these scriptures to myself and telling myself what God really believes about me, not what I believe about me. And eventually, it took hold because God's scriptures are promises to us, and His promises will never fail. He's not a lie. And so if we continue, not just to tell ourselves these things, but then to begin to believe these things. When I say look in the mirror and say, I'm a unique, unrepeatable miracle of God, I'm not talking about just mouthing a few words. I'm talking about saying it enough to when you start looking at it and remembering it and thinking about it throughout the day, you're understanding that you are a unique. There's only one of you. And if you don't believe me, Go see if anybody else has your fingerprint. They don't. There's only one of you, as too many of you already know. That wasn't me. Ah, this fingerprint says it was, man. That was that other guy. <laughs> so the other guy that looks like me, no, nah, the fingerprint says it was you, man. You see what I'm saying? And you're unrepeatable. There's not two of you. There may be two of you that kind of look alike, but there's not two of you. Even your twin is not you. Think about that. An identical twin is not the same person. It's two totally different people. So we're unrepeatable and we are miracles of God. And if you break it down that way and think about just those three words, unrepeatable, unique, unrepeatable miracle of God, your day is going to be a whole lot better if you start understanding then that's really what's going on. Okay? Then, so the next thing we did, we talked about positive attitude, positive self-talk. Then how am I, how do we, how, how are you going to begin to view your problem? 
Most of us view our problems just as that, they're problems. I view those same, same things now as opportunities. Give you an example. I'll be honest with you, yesterday I was a little nervous about doing this, this interview. Okay? You know, and then I really got nervous when the guy said, well, I'm doing you and then I'm doing, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, the National Association of Addiction, Addiction Counselors or something like that. Anyway, these, this is the people who are fighting for us, lobbyists and stuff up in, up in, up in Tallahassee and Washington and stuff, trying to get us rights and things like that. Those of that have screwed them up. These are the people that, and they, they got this guy that's running that, you know, the president or the CEO of that, of that organization is going to also be on this cliff. Now, I didn't really need to hear that. I was already nervous. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, gee whiz. <laughs> you know, you know, we're kidding ourselves here, man. <laughs> they got Adam, Adam and, oh. and myself. Yeah. And, and we're, you know, we're, we're kind of, this, is, we're, this ain't going nowhere. And then I, as I sat down, I'm talking to him, which here's what came to my mind. I realized, hey, wait a minute, you know, you're not talking very puzzling. So I told him, I said, so let me get this straight. See, this is how, this is how, how I looked at it. I said, so you're talking to, to me because we're boots on the ground. He said, yeah, because I want to hear... The guys that are in the trenches, what's going on? I said, you're talking to him because you want to hear what all the big shots and, you know, I mean, we weren't on film. We were, um, you know, uh, yeah, basically. I said, he's going to have, like, all the, the facts, the figures, the, the numbers, the this, the that. For me, you want the real deal. For me and, and, and the guy, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're going to be, you want to hear the real deal. Yes, that's exactly why I'm doing this and why we're doing it. Great. All my fears and worries went away. So when it was Adam's turn to go up first, we let him go up there first. Yeah. Kelly and I sat out there with him in the very hot sun. But the good news is there was a breeze. <laughs> so we all did sweat like stuck pigs. And we sat out there to encourage him to do the best that God, God can let him do. And like I said, I admonished him. He did a great job. But then it was my turn. Well, the first thing I had to find out was, okay, where are we doing this interview? Well, actually, what I did was I, I kind of used positive self-talk. I said, we are doing this interview inside, right, in the air conditioning? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, thank God. <laughs> and then... Knowing or, or realizing that I'm the boots on the ground guy, which is right up my alley, it was easy for me to talk about the opioid addictions and, and stuff as opposed to what's going on with COVID right now and how it's affected not just the ministry but the, you guys and, and stuff like You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and actually we went about an hour and 15 minutes in that interview. I mean, that's, that's how much tape he's got. <laughs> Of course, you know, you'll probably see about 30 seconds of me in some little snippet. But that's what I needed to do. You know, the night before, I had set myself up because I knew I was a little nervous the night before even, before I knew this other guy was going to be on. And so I, I told Kelly, I said, I got to come up with a great catchphrase. <laughs> you know, something that kind of like grabs people. Bam! Yeah, you know. And what happened was I came up with his catchphrase. <laughs> Two, he says, how, how do you view this? I said, two pandemics have collided. <laughs> A mega pandemic. So this guy who's asking me questions says, would you like to expound on that? I said, sure. And I went ahead and I did a half an hour just on, the, on how the opioid pandemic has been overshadowed, I mean rightfully so, by, by the COVID pandemic. And we've been forgotten. Because the bottom line is, go to any hospital and tell them 
you know, you, 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 you think you're overdosing or something like that, or you're, you need to come off of, of the dope or whatever, whatever it is, and see how you're going to be, not because they don't care, but because they don't have time. You're not as worrisome to them as the guy that might be dying from COVID. <clears throat> so you'll be put, okay, not a problem. Yeah, you know, okay. here's a few phone numbers. Go make a few phone calls type of thing. They're not gonna. They're not gonna worry about it. You know. Yeah. You know. And 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 I'm not saying that they're not caring. These people aren't caring. Of course they're caring. They're they're working in hospitals and stuff. That's what they do. But the bottom line is, this pandemic of COVID has overshadowed us and and kind of smothered the opioid pandemic. You don't hear about the opioid pandemic anymore on TV hardly. I mean, that's why I was so surprised when this guy. I said, Well, what do you want to talk about? So I want to talk about the opioid pen, uh, uh, crisis. And I, I mean, I, you know me, I'm, I'm wide open. I said, really? <laughs> he says, yeah. I said, because, you know, there's not too many people talking about it right now. Yeah. He's exactly. He says, I want to bring it, bring it, I want to get it moving again. And whatever reasons. And so, so you see what I'm saying? So that's what got me to, to feel comfortable in sharing all the stuff that I shared, and I was comfortable in realizing I'm the boots on the ground, I can be me. I don't need to try to be somebody else or, you know, talk numbers and, and you know, all this stuff because, you know, reality is I don't care about the numbers. I care about the people who come through this ministry. I mean, don't get me wrong, I care, but but this is the this is the people, God's, you're the people that God has put in, in my, under my care. I'm, I'm not so much concerned with the millions of people that aren't getting treatment. I'm more concerned with trying to keep those of you here so you can continue your treatment. More than worried about, gee, I wonder if those thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people, whatever it is, who aren't getting treatment, maybe I'll send them out an email or something. You know, oh, by the way, you know, we have a few beds available. You know what I'm saying? You get what I'm getting at? So, so we have to practice this positive talk. So again, positive attitude, which is a learned behavior. Positive self-talk, using scriptures, <coughs> viewing our problems as opportunities. And then how about this one next? How about you cut out the, uh, the gripe sessions and the group gripe sessions? How about instead of having gripe sessions... We try to single out each of you that is griping or has gotten an invitation to somebody's pity party. Instead of going to the pity party, you go in there and try to single out each of you one positive thing that has happened in your life instead of all talking about the one very little negative aspect that might have just happened to you. Oh man, can you believe it? They didn't have dessert out today. What the heck is going on over there, over here? Things must be falling apart. They're probably going to close down in no time. Without They've dessert. cut out the dessert. No, seriously, you know what I'm saying? I know, I know it sounds crazy, and that's obviously an exaggeration, but isn't really that what goes on when you're having great sessions? Some little, tiny, minute thing that one person got to a burr under a saddle about, and then he starts handing out invitations to the rest of you to come to the party, and then everybody is all griping about, and it hasn't even happened to you, and you weren't even thinking about it, but you know what the heck, let's jump on the bandwagon. Well, I'm saying, let's do something different. Next time you're invited to one of them parties, I say go. Only instead of that, try to get everybody to say one good thing that's happened all day to them. Instead of everybody talking about one bad thing that happened to maybe one person. Oh my God, man, we didn't get a hundred in, in our in our room because my bed or somebody's bed wasn't made exactly correct. The whole day is shot. My program is down the poop chute. You know, how about, hey, the good news is there were eight other beds in there that were done correctly. So how about you get on the stick and start making your bed? You see what I'm saying? It sounds crazy, but it's not. It's those little things. Next, 
How about when you're hearing other people's problems, instead of joining in with the problem, you start giving them solutions. Instead of being part of the problem, be part of the solution. Oh my God, you know, I'm only making X amount of dollars or, you know, whatever. Hey, praise God, man. But at least you're, yeah, at least you're working. Because I know a lot of you guys have lost your jobs because of COVID and you're still not working yet. But at least you're working. Well, man, you know, the government, the, the, the federal government help stuff there at 600 bucks is going to be stopping soon. And what am I going to do? And hey, but you've had it for two months now. I don't know. Sounds pretty good, good to me. You know, yeah, you've been, you've been, you know, it doesn't look like you're like starving to death. You know what I'm saying? That kind of stuff. Kind of like when you come to any counselor here, and isn't that what you come? You come with a problem, we give you a solution. Because we can dwell on the problems all day long and bum everybody out. Or we can figure out what the solution is and get you going back on, get on the right track again. Amen. That's all I'm saying. Focus on what the answer is, not what the problem is. Mm, that was good. good. And then if you really want to know what the bottom line of this whole thing is, if you really want to put it into just a few words, it's this. Start hanging out with the winners. Start hanging out with like-minded people. You know? When the, 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 the negative talk starts, whether on the job or here at Fresh Start or whatever, and the war stories are starting, do what I've told you to do, and then whoever's acting like we all move away and just talk about something positive. Oh, we didn't have any dessert. We're going to, you know, Fresh Start's going down the... The, the, they're going to probably close up by the weekend and because we didn't have dessert. And yeah, how about this? How about that pot pie was stinking delicious? Amen. It was good. <laughs> and day after day after day, our cook continues to minister to us Amen. through Amen. his cooking Amen. skills. How about that? Because I got news for you. I remember when you were getting... The same thing mm -hmm. over okay. and over and time? over again. That you know, meatloaf <laughs> you know <laughs> the meatloaf that you know you put it you put a piece of it in, in a boat and the boat goes down. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Again, thankful for it. But you see how easy it is to get negative because we could all we could all talk about that, couldn't we? But how about we talk about how great that? Because I mean, I ate I ate tonight and it was it was delicious. I mean, I tell you the truth. Since I've hired him, everything has been delicious. Even the bad stuff or the stuff I don't like has been delicious. And I, not that I don't like it because it's bad. It's not, I don't like it because it's not my, my, my forte. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is, we got a man finally in the program, just like the rest of the counselors here, who has a heart to minister to you, and thank God he happens to do it through food. Amen. Just like family. Yeah. Does. And I mean, the guy is always like looking out, you know, when he goes to the food bank and, and you know, what can we do and how can we, and he's always, he's always wheeling and dealing with them guys down there and, you know, hmm. trying to get a little more of this and a little more of that. Not for me. I can only, you see me, I only eat a little bit at night time. Yeah. So the rest of them two pots or whatever had to go someplace. Yeah, right. And again, I don't see anybody losing weight right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So something must be going right. You know, I know he's been, you know, and I mean, I, this is what I'm getting. And I don't want to dwell on, on, <laughs> on our cook but, and what he's doing, but <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? How about we dwell on that instead? You know, granted, there was no dessert out tonight, but I'm pretty sure there should have been dessert out last night. There's probably going to be dessert out tomorrow night, and I can tell you for sure there's going to be dessert out on Sunday nights because those are the nights we talked about putting the dessert out. I know for a fact the man's got 15 boxes of cake mix up there of all different flavors and, and sort, and he's frothing at the mouth on how to, what he can make. I mean, if the guy ever gets any canned fruit, 
you guys are going to be like eating like pineapple upside down cake. You know, I mean, you're going to be, you know. So if you want to pray, pray that we get some canned fruit in here. <laughs> Amen. There might be a bunch showing up tomorrow. But you see what I'm saying? You can, we can dwell all day long on the negative, but, but let's try to practice dwelling on the positive. Let's put God's word through it. And let's, let's just not name it and claim it type of thing, but name it and claim it with authority, the authority of God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Praise you.